When it comes to buying any GPU, you're faced with a lot of decisions as to what brand and model you go for. But in today's climate, you're more than likely going to find that it comes down to what's available on the day that you have the opportunity to buy it. Though that comes with a caveat as what happens if you don't know what you're buying and you want to make sure that you're going for the right model. Which brings us to today and what we have here with the Inno3D RTX 5070 Ti X3, a card that has a unique opportunity as Nvidia don't have a Founders Edition for this particular GPU. So has Inno done enough to strike up a compelling option for those wanting to spend $749 on a GPU right now? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Oi oi, I hear you're in the market for a proper top of the line monitor. Best blacks, brightest whites, sharper than a tailor's crease, am I right? Yeah, that's the one. Well, look no further, my son. Feast your peepers on this, the Glaremaster 5000, a true marvel of technology. Just uh, maybe don't use it when the sun's out. What? That's not what I want. I was after a 32 inch 4K, 165 Hertz QD OLED with adaptive sync. Cool, blimey, we've got a right tech connoisseur here. You don't mess about, do you? All right, all right. I see where you're coming from. Forget the glare master, that was just a warm up. What you need, my friend, is the Agon Pro, AG326UD from AOC. Top tier gear, 4K, 165 Hertz, QD OLED, all the bells and whistles. And get this, HDR 400 certified. That's the real deal, no mucking about. Hmm, that does sound good. Of course it does. I wouldn't steer you wrong, would I? I'm all about quality, me. Now, if you want to get your hands on one of these beauties, you know what to do. To find out more, click the link in the description below. You won't regret it, my son. Lovely jubbly. So let's start off with what this card is all about. It's an X3, so it's Inno's way of offering up an alternative to the Founders Edition and other MSRP-based cards. Though I know that doesn't account for much in this day and age, as a lot of 5070 Ti's, along with other 50 series cards, are retailing for well above MSRP, which in this case should be $749. Now, the big thing for this card, and it was the same when we looked at the RTX 5080 X3, is that Inno have managed to create a triple fan card that only occupies two slots inside your case, which is probably the biggest selling point of this variant, as while bigger and more expensive cards are available, if you're after something that's suitable for a small form factor build where space comes at a premium, then, well, there really isn't a lot of choice on the market. There's the obvious Founders Edition from Nvidia, but, obviously with a 5070 Ti, that just doesn't exist. And at a time where buying a GPU could literally come down to what's available on the day that you're, well, ready to buy it, the card that you might be looking at, whether that be an FE, if we're talking 5070, 5080, 5090, or some other MSRP card, well, it may not actually be available. And I think that's where Inno are hedging their bets. No frills, slim, does the trick, and is priced how it should be. Obviously not taking into account what retailers end up uh, scalping it for. So looking at this card, it's quite a simple affair. And in all honesty, that's not a bad thing as it does the trick and is a tried and tested method for other cards that Inno have released onto the market prior to this one. What we get is a modest cooler that typically does the job. There's no extra added features that most gamers would deem as, let's call it unnecessary. This means there's no RGB, no dual BIOS, and instead a sheer focus on providing a solution to gamers that will keep their frame rates high and their temperatures low. With that in mind, it's still a very appealing card that offers a black and metal look, though sadly there is no metal on the front of this card, though Inno have actually managed to kind of trick the eye a little bit with a brushed metal plastic shroud, with metal screws that add to its industrious styling. Having an understated design also does wonders for fitting in no matter the system. If the rest of your build has flashing lights, or if you have a stealthy build, I honestly feel that this GPU will fit in quite nicely. The back of the card is pretty understated too, with a full metal backplate which extends beyond the length of the PCB. This allows for Inno to slap a large heatsink on the card with plenty of space for heat to escape out of the back, while wrapping around the end of the card for extra structural rigidity. And of course, some added thermal pads can be found here to assist in cooling, which is something pretty impressive considering this is an MSRP card, and it's something that we don't always see, even on cards that command a higher price. There's also some pretty understated branding to boot with an Inno 3D logo and GeForce RTX wording too. And that's basically it. 
Now, in terms of size, this is one of its benefits, as while it does come in at 300 millimeters long and 116 millimeters tall, it is only 41 millimeters thick, making it a dual slot card. And as mentioned, makes it perfect for smaller form factor builds where thickness is generally the big obstacle. Now, in terms of weight, it comes in at 1,225 grams, but due to its thickness and large heatsink, it actually feels remarkably solid and sturdy, even though it is, I guess you could class as pretty lightweight in the grand scheme of things. Now, due to it not being the heaviest card on the planet, it doesn't come with a GPU support bracket of any kind. But in all honesty, I'm fine with that, as I'm sure it was done to keep costs down and to ensure that this card was due to hit that all important MSRP pricing. And even though it sometimes, yeah, a tiny little thing, it can actually add up in terms of pricing to, well, well above where in O3D we're actually hoping this card to be. Now, while some gamers will be unhappy that the cooler design is a reuse solution, I'm actually fine with that as I'm of the mentality of kind of, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And in terms of this card, that works. Though, of course, we will see what that means in terms of temperatures very shortly. Connection-wise, we get the standard three DisplayPort connectors and a single HDMI. And on top of the card is the single 12 volt 2 by 6 connector, of which a dual 8 pin to 12 volt adapter comes included in the box to give the card its 300 watts of total board power. And both Nvidia and Inno recommend a 700 watt power supply as a minimum. So after looking at various X3 base cards, we know what to expect from the looks. And while some users may want the flashing lights that some more premium models come with, others, especially given the price premium that we've seen on the RTX 50 series, simply want a functional card that gives them the gaming performance that's expected for a reasonable price, while still giving them some of the added extras in terms of a strong cooler and overclocking headroom, which actually brings me on to seeing how far this card can be pushed. It's here where, as we've seen before, there's well, no extra headroom in the power limit, as other cards from other brands have, though in our experience it hasn't actually affected the end result of overclocking, so isn't exactly a deal breaker. That aside, as with other RTX 50 series cards, we were able to push our memory by 375 MHz or 3000 MHz effective, which is the enforced limit set by Nvidia. This brought our memory speed up from the 1750 MHz stock speed now to 2125 MHz, while our core clock was increased by a very healthy 460 MHz, now sitting with a boost clock of 2912 MHz. Now, in terms of what this means for our cooling performance, along with how it compares to the stock performance, we booted up F124 for an hour long loop to see how this MSRP based card actually performs. It's here where the Inno 3D card does a great job of keeping temperatures under control, with a GPU temperature averaging around 68 degrees and memory junction temperature a smidge higher at 69 degrees. While our overclock does generate a little more heat, we're only talking in the realms of around two degrees higher on both temperatures. Our clock speed when overclocked for the most part averaged just below 3000 megahertz and did also see our fan speed increase from the mid 1800 RPM market stock to just below 2000 RPM when overclocked, all while not using any more power than stock at around 300 watts. Now to see how the card performs at both stock and overclocked and how it compares to the MSI Ventus 3X OC that we looked at not too long ago, we put it through its paces in a few games to see how things line up. Starting with a Plague Tale at 4K and set to Ultra, and the Inno card does come in slightly lower in terms of performance than MSI's offering of just over 1%, which does fall within margin of error, and in this case only equates to just one frame per second. The overclock does help uplift our frame rate to the tune of 9% though, and as we've seen with the 50 series cards before, this does have a somewhat negative effect on the 1% lows, which drops down by a single frame per second. So definitely some room for tweaking here, but this is no fault of Inno, and instead is a fine tuning bug with Nvidia. In Black Myth Wukong, we now see the Inno card above the MSI Ventus card by just over 2%, making this a margin of error difference, which accounts for only a single frame per second, with the 1% lows also only seeing a single FPS difference as well. The overclock did manage to give us another 10% performance, and this helped to push the card above the RTX 4080 Super and also the 7900 XTX from AMD. In Cyberpunk, again, the Inno card is the better of the two when compared to MSI, as the Inno card comes in with 6% higher performance. Though overclocking in this case, while it did still increase the performance, it was only by a smaller 2% margin, which translates to just one FPS. The 1% lows aren't particularly amazing, but they're not so bad that it's anything to worry too much about, and this has been a trend that we've seen with other RTX 50 series cards, and driver updates could help to rectify this. In Indiana Jones, the MSI card finds itself outperforming the Inno card by 4%, while the overclock helps push performance above stock by 12%, now pushing the Inno card above the MSI by 6%. But of course, we could see this switch back the other way if we were to overclock the MSI card as well. 
In Starfield, there's not really much to say about stock performance as it perfectly matches with the MSI Ventus 3X OC card, even in the lows, which is somewhat impressive considering that this is a stock card from factory and not a pre-overclock card like the MSI. When overclocked though, we do see a typical 9% boost in frames with the lows being fairly impressive despite the issues that the 50 series is becoming known for in the lows. Booting back into Black Myth Wukong, but this time with ray tracing set to medium, and the Inno 3D card does come in with 4% more performance than the MSI. But with such low frame rates to begin with, this does only account for a single FPS. Overclocking the card sees a couple of frames increase, with us seeing an 8% increase in performance over stock, but again, these are very low frame rates to begin with, and this only makes up for 2 frames per second in total. Then lastly in Cyberpunk with ray tracing enabled, the Inno and MSI card both matching the averages and are separated by just a single frame in the lows, which is neither here nor there. When overclocked we do see a small boost in performance and I say small because though it is a 9% uplift, in reality it's only a 2 FPS difference. So the results here are certainly interesting and this is one of those moments where I have to be brutally honest. I'd like to think Inno 3D will appreciate that as we've had a great working relationship over the years but when a product has clear shortcomings, it's our job to highlight them. We pride ourselves on being unbiased and providing the most accurate information possible, whether it's on the website or on YouTube. And that means calling things as we see them. And in this case, there's, well, a real issue with just it being a 5070 Ti. Whilst the performance is pretty good, even matching or beating the MSI Ventus in many cases, we find that the card just hasn't done enough to make buying a 5070 Ti worth it. And well, that's through no fault of Inno. That all comes down to Nvidia. If the 5070 Ti was available for a good price, then I'd be saying a completely different thing right now. But that simply isn't the case. And that's well, what we saw here today with, I guess, underwhelming performance, at least for the money, which is currently much higher than it should be thanks to people and even businesses scalping and adjusting prices to fit their own agenda. And again, this isn't Inno 3D's fault because if you're after a 5070 Ti and a dead set on it, then this one actually fits the bill quite nicely. It has performance on par with what you'd expect whilst I guess having enough headroom to overclock it fairly easily. And it just, I don't know, ticks all of the right boxes in every area. The cooler is more than sufficient at keeping things running well and just, well, isn't over-designed. It's simple. It's exactly what it needs to be. And in all honesty, I like that. Also, since it's one of the smaller cards that we've looked at, you could easily fit this into most systems, unlike some of the larger cards that we've had come through here, as, well, this one actually has a decent chance in fitting in an ITX build, which along with its lower power consumption and lower heat, could actually make this quite an appealing card for many people. Again, though, I can't help but think about the price. If you were able to get this card for the retail price, then in all honesty, it's a decent deal especially if you're upgrading from something like a 3070 or 3070 Ti. But with the way that prices are right now, we are seeing major problems with stock and availability. And of course, as I mentioned, scalpers, which are causing prices to sit much higher than they're meant to be. If we ignore the ongoing problems with pricing to try and be as fair as possible, then yes, this is a great card. I mean, yeah, a fantastic card, as if you get it for the right price, you won't be disappointed, especially if you're playing at 1440p, which I think, in all honesty, is the sweet spot for this type of card. Though that's not to say that 4K is completely out of the question, especially in more intense games that can utilize DLSS, especially with MFG. Though the number of titles in that department is still pretty low, but will get better over time. So, yeah. It's a difficult one because whilst I do like the card and would like to recommend it, it does have a caveat. And yes, you guessed it. As I've mentioned, it's the price. If you can buy this card for MSRP, then I would recommend it. But anything more? Yeah, then it's probably best you just wait a little while and just, I don't know, see what happens to the market. If you can wait, of course. I get it. When you're dead set on something, sometimes you just want to go for it. For now, yeah. That's going to wrap this one up. Not the nicest way to thin it, kind of finish things off, but again, we present the facts that are in front of us. And well, that's how this one is looking. And again, I want to make it clear. The only thing letting this card down right now is the all-important price. And sadly, that's the case for, well, every single RTX 5070 Ti model from every brand. And well, actually, some are even worse than others. 
There you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. Also, if you love what we do, then you can help support everything that we do here, along with getting a ton of cool and exclusive benefits, such as behind the scenes extras, bi-weekly game nights, a super special area on our Discord, and much, much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.